Hey guys, welcome to another edition of the Suburban Driving with Miranda. This week I have the all new 2020 Lexus UX 250H. I've gathered up my thoughts and I'm here to tell you all about them. Sitting inside the 2020 Lexus UX 250H might seem a little overwhelming at first. There's a lot going on in here and truthfully, I like it. Uh, Lexus has always had really pretty interiors. Uh, I mean, their cars in general are gorgeous on the outside. We'll talk about the spindle grill when we get to the exterior. But in terms of design inside, they're really ergonomic. They're really aesthetically pleasing. Everything is kind of within reach. It makes sense. I don't get in and wonder what, well, why is that button there? Why can't I reach that properly? And this interior fits me perfectly. This is a very small car. It's a very compact car. Uh, it is their smallest, I believe. Uh, I pulled up beside a CT, a uh, Lexus CT the other day, and I felt like I was on par with the sizing for it which seems about right. Um, in terms of cargo space in the back, this doesn't have a massive trunk because the battery is back there. So the flooring of the trunk is quite high up. The roof line is very low because of the shape of the back, which kind of hinders the rear view uh, viewing at the back for blind spots. I have quite a large blind spot out the side here. The rear window is quite small because again, the design of the rear, but it looks very pretty. And if you want to sacrifice cargo space and visibility for beauty, then this is the car for you. Um, back to the inside though, this is the F Sport edition. So it has the F Sport seats, which are the highly bolstered ones. You see F Sport here on the back headrest. I've got all the red stitching here. I have F Sport on my steering wheel. I've got red stitching on the shifter. Let me tell you what I hate first, <laughs> the trackpad. So, in every Lexus that I've been in with the trackpad, I hate it a little bit more every time I use it. And hate is a very strong word, but I feel like it's appropriate in this stage. And you can ask any journalist, I feel, who has driven a Lexus with the trackpad. None of us like it. It's super distracting. And maybe because we don't live with it long enough, we need to admit that we only have the cars for a week. We don't get to get used to them further than seven days in before we switch it up again and we're driving something else. So maybe we need that longer learning curve to get used to this trackpad. But personally, I find it super distracting, really like twitchy. You know, if you hit a bump and you're trying to get to something on here and you're on the trackpad, your finger moves, you're not on the right button anymore. You're trying to look at that. You're trying to look at the trackpad. You're trying not to crash the car. It's a lot. But in this model, there's this really cool little section right here where your hand sits and you have your tune, radio, volume, media, and you can change the tracks here because let's be honest, what we all do the most of these systems is change songs and radio stations. I mean, who's really checking the weather and going through maps so intently or checking other apps on here? You're not, you're changing music because you got bored of what was on the radio. So this is what you really wanna to get to the most. And it's a really cool location for it. Works really well, fits my hand super well, and it's really easy to get used to. So kudos to Lexus. They didn't get rid of the trackpad, but at least they added something that's a hell of a lot more functional and really easy to use. Now I'll sit down here, I've got my EV mode, uh, my hold, uh, my stop hold button. Um, all of my HVAC stuff is here, really easy to get to. I like the um, layeredness of the dash. Again, this pulls over from Toyota when I had the RAV4 last week, I mentioned like the little shelving system. This does not have that, but it has the same layered look. The screen is really nice and big and long. I have a beautiful analog clock here. I love that touch too with all the digitalness of the world these days. I love a nice analog clock on the dash. I think it's really classy. Um, and then up here I have my traction control and I have my drive mode, sport, normal, and eco. Super easy to get to. One of the only vehicles I think that have these um, dials in this location. And at first it might seem distracting or like it would get in the way of you driving, but it's a perfect location for it. Cause if you want to make a quick change, you've got it right there. I've got my paddle shifters for when I'm in sport mode and I have my charge pad down here. Really nice amount of storage in here with some USB ports. And yeah, I mean, in terms of interior, this is great and it's small. It's not cramped, it's tight. 
and my son in the back asked that I move the passenger seat forward. He didn't have enough leg room. I have it forward enough for him now. I'm not sure how comfortable a passenger would be. I have yet to put somebody there. And in terms of headroom in the back, he's good, though I can't imagine a much taller adult would be super comfortable back there for a long period of time, only because of the roof line. Again, it is sloping because of the shape of the vehicle. But for me personally, being the size that I am and having the size of the family that I do, I really like this interior and its size and its comfort. Everything's within arm reach. I don't feel like I'm having to really reach over to get to anything. It's all right there. The steering wheel is a really nice size. It's chunky without being too much. Um, it feels good in my hands. This, the shifter feels really good. It's in the right spot. In all, I, I really like this. My first impressions of the UX 250H are phenomenal. Um, in terms of user friendliness. And like I said, the only thing that I lament Lexus for is this trackpad. Maybe next time around, they'll just get rid of it entirely. There's no denying that the Lexus UX 250H is a unique looking vehicle. Now, Lexus has had some flack for its exterior look before, especially when it comes to the F Sport packages that adds that alien predator type front spindle grille. Now, personally, I really like it. I don't like it when it has an Ontario plate stuck in the front. I think that kind of ruins the look. But in terms of the overall look, I love that blacked out front grille. I think it's really powerful. It makes a statement on the road. And the overall shape of this little compact crossover is really, really nice. I love how low slung it is. I like that it's compact. I like the shoulder line. It has just the right amount of aggression. And I even like the plastic clad wheel well liners. Now, some people will say that it doesn't fit with kind of the luxury look of the car, but this is supposed to be a crossover. It's supposed to be kind of rugged. It's not a city car. It is a crossover. It has all wheel drive. So it needs those bigger wheel wells. It needs to look like it can handle some off-roading if you would really like to do that with your Lexus UX. Um, one of the coolest exterior features on the Lexus UX, in my opinion, and in my eight-year-old son's opinion, are the aero stabilizing blade lights. I'd rather call them bat wing lights, and a couple of people online actually have as well. They're really unique and they really set the UX apart in terms of its look on the road. And they're connected by 120 individual LED lights across the back. And when they light up at night, it is super cool. And it really gives the UX this unique, different look from all the other crossovers out there. So after a few days with the Lexus UX 250H, you can see I am not wearing the same clothing that I was in the interior portion of this video. Um, I needed a couple days of it only because I've never driven this model, it's brand new, and I really wanted to have a feel for what it could offer in terms of drivability and uh, efficiency, cargo space, all that stuff. And at the end of the week now, I am quite impressed with it. I think it's a very small car in terms of interior space. It only has 486 liters of cargo space. That's only about 100 more than a Volkswagen Golf with the seats up. And because the trunk is so high up, the the bottom platform you don't have a lot of the height that you would in a normal hatchback that being said it still has a decent back seat when the three of us were in here we didn't feel like we were cramped we didn't feel like it was overcrowded um, and I've done some shopping and I put some bags back there plus you know some karate equipment all that stuff and again it didn't feel overly uh, tight so I think for a family like mine it's a good vehicle now what about the drive so this thing has a two liter four cylinder engine and it has a self-charging hybrid system. This is a 250H. There is a 200 version of the UX. This is the 250, it's the top one. So it has the all wheel drive and the self-charging hybrid like I just mentioned. And it has a combined horsepower output of 181. It is supposed to give me a combined fuel economy of six liters per hundred kilometers. Uh, it can go as low as 5.7 on the highway. Truthfully, I've not looked at the dash and because I'm driving, I'm not going to do it right now. My numbers have been good though. And the fact that I have driven a lot this week and I only have a 40 liter gas tank and I haven't filled it up yet and I still have hundred kilometers left on my range. And I'm doing a lot of back and forth because my son's back at school now, like everybody else's. Um, well, not everybody's, but like most of us have sent our children back to school. So I've done a lot of back and forth and a lot of errands and picking him up, dropping him off, blah, blah, blah. And I'm impressed with the fuel economy on this. Now it also has a direct shift CVT, 
remember from my last video with the Subaru, I am not a huge fan of CVTs. I don't mind this one. Again, I don't know, maybe I'm, maybe they're growing on me somehow. Um, it's a little bit loud at times. If I accelerate on the highway, it gets a little bit droney. I can shift if I want to on my own. I have paddle shifters on the steering wheel. Truthfully, I haven't really used them. I kind of save myself from the CVT by engaging sport mode with a little dial up here. It really kind of gives you those fake shifts without you having to shift yourself. I haven't really used eco mode. Again, you all know me at this point. I'm not about saving fuel or anything else. Sadly, all the eco people are gonna come after me now. Uh, I just like to feel how the car drives, so I really keep it in normal mode most of the time, or if I wanna feel a little bit more power, I pop it into sport. Now, this is supposed to also have the tightest turning radius in its class segment. I have not truly measured that out, but uh, I can tell you that in parking lots and in my own condo parking lot, which is quite tight, uh, it does well. I don't feel like it's big, but again, this isn't a big car. And I think that's probably one of the things that I like the most about it as well, that this is a compact, small vehicle that offers all wheel drive, which is super important for our winters. And I could see myself really enjoying this in the snow. I mean, overall, this is a pleasant vehicle to drive. The interior is super comfortable. It's comfortable on the road. I like the way it looks on the outside. Now, yes, I have the hugely expensive, you know, 8,000 some odd dollar F Sport 2 package on this one. So it does look a bit more upscale on the outside and the inside. You know, a base UX 200 is not going to look like this one. And that's something that you have to keep in mind when you go to the dealer, if you're in the market for this one, is that they're not all gonna look like this and you are gonna pay for those extras. Are those extras worth it? Depends on if you have the money to spend per month. Uh, it really all comes down to that in the end. In all, I mean, the 250H I think is a great, it is a good price for the vehicle that it is. You know, we're looking almost at the same price as the RAV4 I had last week. Now the RAV4 has a ton more space than this vehicle has, but it doesn't have the hybrid. It was heavier on gas, but it had more cargo room, bigger on the road, heavier on the highway. It really depends on your lifestyle of what you would, you know, what you think is worth your dollars spent. Now, like I said, after a week behind the wheel in this thing, first impressions, first time I drove in this car because it's an all new model for Lexus. Uh, I love the way it handles. I think it feels tight, low to the ground. It has a really good center of gravity for cornering. Uh, the steering is really on point. It doesn't feel disconnected. Um, I love the way it feels when I'm taking the roundabout. It's a fun car to drive despite being a hybrid. Uh, and that's something that I don't often say either. This is a good combination. Lexus knows how to make its hybrid vehicles. You know, Toyota and Lexus from the beginning have kind of been the leaders in that segment and it shows, especially in a vehicle like this. All in all, the Lexus UX 250H is a really fun car to drive, even though it's a hybrid. It has great fuel efficiency. It's good for a small family. And you know what? The exterior look really sets it apart from other compact crossovers on the road. And I think that is a stellar quality in terms of a segment that's so tightly packed right now. As always, if you guys will have any questions for me, any suggestions, any concerns, hit me up at Miss Miranda L on Instagram and Twitter, Miranda Lightstone on Facebook.com, and I hope to see you guys back next week. Thanks.